The Workers' Party, Our Plain Duty, by Earl Browder, published December 24, 1921. The present crisis in the American labor movement is without precedent. Politically, the working class is impotent. Economically, it is bending beneath tremendous assaults, and its leadership has been demonstrated as pitifully weak and even treacherous. Demoralization is threatened, and only the rallying of all class-conscious workers upon a program of instant, energetic, and well-planned action can meet the situation. The crisis is a reflex of the general breakdown of the prevailing economic system, capitalism. The absurdly inadequate reply of labor to the assaults of the capitalist arises directly from the fact that the officialdom of its organizations, politically as well as economic, accepts the capitalist system as the starting point of all their efforts. Even socialists, rejecting capitalism in theory, accept it and all its institutions in program and practice. How can they then move in any militant energetic way toward any solution of the crisis which arises out of the very foundation of the capitalist system which they accept? They cannot. They can only writhe in their impotency and babble absurd shibboleths learned in childhood. The class-conscious workers are realizing the situation and they are demanding the formation of an organization which can give aggressive and militant leadership in this crisis. Such an organization must take the form of a mass political party, voicing their needs and aspirations of the exploited masses, and pointing the way by which, through struggle and sacrifice, these needs can be met and these aspirations realized. The call for the convention to organize the Workers' Party of America comes at a time when it will arouse the hopes of every class-conscious worker. Never was the need so great for a real working-class party. Never were the conditions so ripe for the launching of such a movement. Everywhere the conscious workers will be looking to this convention for the rallying cry and the practical program which point towards immediate steps to revolutionary activity. Such a rallying cry and such a program are indicated in the call for the formation of the Workers' Party. Our duty is plain. Our path lies clear. This convention will have many naughty problems to consider. It will have vexed questions to thresh out. It will have terrible burdens to assume. It will have little honor to distribute, but much work. It will have a supreme duty to bring about unity among all those fighting for the Workers' Republic. Let us go into it with determination that no question will be slighted, no problem left unfaced, and nothing left undone to achieve success in this effort. With such a spirit, the outlook is favorable for real revolutionary achievement.